Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the topic of the digital footprint and steps you can take to reduce it. We also invite you to check out and discover more original CSIAC content that is available on our website at www.csiac.org. Every action an individual conducts online leaves data behind. This data trail is referred to as a digital footprint. This podcast will describe how a digital footprint is created, the scale of this data trail, and measures that can be utilized to reduce it. Let's examine what a digital footprint is in more detail. Any activity performed on the internet leaves behind a record. Anytime you send an email, shop online, or post information on social media, this data is captured and stored. This process can occur in a couple of different ways. The first category involves the active component of a digital footprint. This takes place when an individual voluntarily divulges information about themselves. One common example of this is registering for an account on a particular website. In order to access a site and utilize its resources, you may first be required to interactively provide various personal information about yourself. In addition, other information an individual freely posts online, such as photos or comments, can contribute to the scope of their digital footprint. By consciously consenting to share information online, this data can then be collected, searched, and possibly even sold to other parties. In the second case, data can be also contributed to one's digital footprint in a passive manner. This information is merely gathered up in the background when an individual is on the internet. For example, when a person is online and browses a website, the pages they viewed along with their associated IP address may be logged by the system. This information can be beneficial to site administrators for troubleshooting purposes, but it is also of great interest to digital marketers and advertising personnel. How might a digital footprint be potentially detrimental to someone? Individuals need to be cognizant that information available online about them may be accessed viewed and assessed by other people. This information can have serious real-world consequences. Consider the recent proliferation and popularity of social media sites. Depending on the nature of posted personal information, it could potentially have wide-ranging negative ramifications and repercussions. It is also possible that sensitive information could be stolen or manipulated by hackers for nefarious purposes. Let's drill down a little bit deeper and take a closer look at some possible harmful outcomes. Could your digital footprint have a negative impact on your future job opportunities? Most definitely. Career Builder states that information posted on social media sites is being researched, reviewed, and evaluated by 70% of employers. In addition, close to 60% indicated that job candidates have not been hired due to inappropriate content or objectionable behavior they discovered online. Your digital footprint could cause severe damage to your personal reputation, which in turn could have long-term adverse effects on your career prospects. Therefore, an individual should seriously consider the nature of their content and or comments before posting them online. Thoughts and actions matter and the consequences could be quite deleterious. A malicious actor can exploit information obtained from a digital footprint to steal an individual's identity. By analyzing data available online, 
an attacker may be able to hack into an individual's email account. Once they gain access, a hacker could take over control of the account. The legitimate rightful owner may be completely locked out. The malicious actor may gain access to more detailed info in the profile fields. Cyber criminals can ma manipulate this information to create a very convincing false identity. This false identity can then be used to apply for loans, open bank accounts, or even obtain medical care. There are other entities called data brokers which collect personal information on individuals that comprise their digital footprint. This information is often gathered from publicly available sources such as census data, warranty registrations, social media sites, as well as court and property records. Data brokers package this information for sale. Advertisers often procure this data to support their marketing activities. The data is usually stored in one centralized location, which increases the security risk. If these companies are breached, large amounts of personal data may be compromised. A significant example demonstrating the importance of the digital footprint involves Facebook and a company called Cambridge Analytica. Via an app for a personality quiz, the company was able to obtain information on not only the individuals taking the quiz, but all their friends and associates too. In the process, Cambridge Analytica was able to collect the data of about 87 million Facebook users. There are a couple of different forms of protection that can be employed. In particular, there are regulations as well as direct actions. Let's first take a look at the regulations. We'll specifically examine two different regulations, the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, and the California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA. The GDPR was implemented by the European Union and went into effect in May of 2018. It is a set of standards that govern how personal data can be stored and shared among companies. Any company that conducts business and provides services to, the, to European citizens is obligated to comply with the GDPR specifications. There are various rights that GDPR provides to individuals. Let's take a look at two of the most significant, the right of access and the right to erasure. GDPR gives individuals the right to access information from organizations that are in possession of their personal data. If an organization is processing an individual's data, they have a right to obtain the following information. What data is being processed and why, how long the data will be stored, who it will be shared with, and the source of the data, if the individual did not provide it themselves. The right to erasure allows individuals to take action. If individuals object to their data being processed, or they no longer consent to the organization having their data, they can request the information be deleted. One example is canceling a credit card. If the account closed has a zero balance, the individual can rightfully ask the company to delete their personal information from the corporate database. However, there are some exceptions to the rule. For instance, an organization may be legally obligated to collect the data or it is used for the public interest. The California Consumer Privacy Act, CCPA, will go into effect at the beginning of 2020. This law will change the way businesses collect and process Californians' data. However, CCPA will apply mainly to larger for-profit corporations that make over $25 million per year by selling the personal data or sharing the info of over 50,000 California residents. 
CCPA will enable Californians to learn what personal information companies have collected about them, opt out of the sale of this data, or request the info be deleted. There are also several direct actions an individual can utilize. We'll examine a number of these. When you go online, you can protect your privacy by enabling the Do Not Track setting in your web browser. All the major browsers allow individuals to easily turn on the Do Not Track function. However, while this is quite easy to implement, it provides limited benefits since most websites on the internet simply ignore this specific request. In addition, since there is no accepted industry standard, the actions taken by different websites to address the Do Not Track feature can vary greatly. Another method an individual can employ to limit their digital footprint is to provide misinformation. For example, this could be utilized when registering for an account on a website. Perhaps some of the information you submit is not totally complete or 100% accurate. You could use a temporary email address to minimize the disclosure of personal information and avoid spam. However, before you do this, you should review the Terms of Service TOS, to see if the false information is specifically prohibited in any given profile field. Let's discuss the privacy settings that are available at various social media sites. Utilizing these settings, an individual can lock down their account by controlling who can access and view their information. This enables you to share information you post on your account with only your selected friends and family members, while simultaneously restricting access to the general public. On some sites, you may even be able to prevent specific individuals from finding your account by identifying their email address or phone number. You might also want to turn off the Location Services feature, which provides info on your physical whereabouts. Another tool you can utilize on the internet is a virtual private network, VPN, which provides a direct point-to-point -point connection. It is a secure tunnel that encrypts a user's communications from their network to an exit node located elsewhere. A VPN prevents malicious actors from being able to intercept your transmissions. This is especially important for activities like online financial transactions or if the data is of a sensitive or personal nature. If you decide to utilize a VPN service, review and analyze the various factors of the VPN provider. Individuals who are very concerned about protecting their privacy should pay close attention to and thoroughly examine the provider's logging policies. Do you have old accounts that exist on sites you no longer use? These inactive accounts still contain your personal information and you are exposing yourself to unnecessary risk if these sites should suffer a data breach. Therefore, in situations like this, it's highly advisable to terminate the accounts entirely or, at least, delete the information contained within them. This action can help minimize the chances of becoming a victim of identity theft. Another mechanism to reduce your digital footprint involves the use of the private browsing options. Once again, all the major browsers have this privacy-focused feature available. When surfing the internet in private mode, information that is typically retained, like cookies or your browsing history, is now deleted when the browsing window is closed. Finally, Try searching for your own name, as well as variations of it, to see what information is discovered. You might find personal information online that you had forgotten existed. If you do, take the aforementioned steps to remove this data. As we discussed in this podcast, all the activities you conduct on the internet leave a trail of data known as your digital footprint. 
This information can certainly provide positive benefits for an individual, but on the other hand, it can also prove harmful if it is obtained by a malicious actor with bad intent. It's ultimately the responsibility of each individual to determine the appropriate balance between privacy and discoverability. Here are some references if you'd like to explore this topic in greater detail. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content useful and informative. If you would like to provide us with feedback, please comment on this video or visit our website at www.csiac.org where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up. Visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.